So recently, I've been streaming Don't Starve Together over on my Twitch account. As I've been playing, I've been told by people that I know more about this game than I initially thought. And I kinda quickly made it to day 70 just by playing, normally. Apparently, this can be a bit of a challenge for players, so I'm going to give you guys a quick video on tips for Don't Starve Together. Without further ado, let's get into this. Armour and Kiting This may sound a bit like a no-brainer, but it's surprising to me the amount of players that don't consider using armour in combat. Let me show you some numbers to convince you if you're one of these. I have 150 health at max playing this character, and this Clockwork Knight I'm going to fight has 900 health. So, I'm already at a disadvantage. Most enemies in Don't Starve have considerably more health than the player, which makes any knowledge about combat valuable. If I go into this fight with a spear and no armour, you can see that I will die very fast. The knight does 40 damage per hit, which means it can kill me in but 4 hits. Now, if I restart this scenario but enter with a helmet this time, you will see that I actually overwhelm the knight and take it out. This is because the helmet is absorbing 80% of the damage at the cost of its durability. So, the knight is only dealing 8 damage per hit compared to 40 before. With a helmet, the knight would need to attack closer to 20 times to kill me. And that's without healing. Quite impressive considering all you need to make a football helmet is a pig skin and a piece of rope. It gets better from here though. If I begin to kite the knight instead, I'm able to take it out swiftly without getting hit at all. Which means realistically I didn't even need armour in the first place. Just bait an attack, then go for a swing or two before disengaging, then go back for another swing after it misses its next attack. Having a stronger weapon like a tentacle spike, handbat, or even dark sword can make this a lot faster, and having any kind of speed boost from a path, cobblestone or walking cane can make kiting easier on newer players. Face tanking is not beneficial in 90% of situations, so I would suggest you learn to kite a range of enemies. Flowers. No, not for sanity, but health. If you plant 3-4 to four flowers around your settlement, you'll see butterflies begin to spawn from them during the day. This is brilliant in fact, because a butterfly drops butterfly wings which heal you for 8 health when eaten. So, if you spend a little bit of time killing these butterflies, you can heal yourself for free effectively. Just craft a bug net and get catching butterflies. You can plant these into the ground to get flowers, to later get more butterflies to kill. In my experience, 3 or 4 flowers is optimal, as any more flowers didn't add to the spawn rate of butterflies. Rotating the camera. I don't know how much I can stress this. New players, I know you're going to be afraid of this, but just trust me, please get used to rotating the camera. You can uncover items hidden behind structures and debris. You can readjust your angle of attack in combat to make kiting easier. And you can give yourself an advantage in exploring by not walking towards the screen and into danger. You'll thank me later if you get used to this, just trust me. <laughs> Crockpot dish. Crockpots are debatably the most important feature of any base, next to ice boxes. They can create insanely good food items to heal your health, hunger and sanity. So I'll share with you some of my own favourite crockpot recipes. Oh, for those who don't know, this is how you craft a crockpot. And for those who still don't know, charcoal is obtained by setting a tree on fire with a torch. Anyway, meatballs. They heal about 60 hunger, which is enough to sustain a character for over a day in game actually. They cost basically nothing to make. Just one of any meat, morsel or monster meat, with three of basically anything besides twigs. I often use berries or ice. Next up. Honey ham. This is like the older cousin of meatballs. A bit more costly, but better in every way. Honey ham heals a tiny bit more hunger, but also heals a lot of health for a bulky food item. If you have the resources to make these, just do it man. Two meats or just a single coupled with a monster meat, and two pieces of honey will get you this deluxe restoration item. Just don't waste your honey on honey nuggets, cause they're kinda crap. Finally, pierogi the best healing food item. Just toss in an egg and a meat with a mushroom, carrot or cactus and finally add an item such as a carrot, berry, ice or birch nut. A single pierogi heals 40 HP, so just a handful of these can get any character back to max health. Explore the map. Some players like to explore the entire map before they set up a base, while some base right next to the spawn portal never venturing far at all. I think both of these can be ineffective, as spawn isn't always the best, and you may not find anything worthwhile by exploring for days on end. I think you should find an area you're happy with, while locating both deserts, the marsh, pig king, a source of rocks, and a cave entrance, 
Anything else you find may help, but isn't necessary. Familiarising yourself with crafting. Next is just a general tip for all new players. Familiarise yourself with what you're going to be crafting a lot when you need to start out. It can make it easier for you when you start a new world, because you know what you need right off the bat. I like to craft a shovel, backpack, pitchfork, football helmet, spear and lantern as soon as I can. Remember, crafting something once means you can craft it anywhere else again. Playing with friends. This isn't a requirement by any means, but it can make resource gathering and raid bosses less intense. Less time spent picking twigs and grass means more time spent doing long term beneficial chores, like crafting structures, working towards magic or exploring the caves. Don't Starve Together is still a different solo experience to the classic Don't Starve, and you shouldn't be intimidated to play it alone. It can get really fun with friends though. And those are my tips for new players. You don't need to follow all of these, as everyone chooses to play this game however they want, which is absolutely fine. I still have a few more things I can say, but I'll save that for the streams or on another video in the future. Speaking of which, I've been streaming more on Twitch. I recently got my affiliate status, so I'm trying to be as proactive on there as possible. And if you guys could drop a follow and stop by when I'm live, it would mean the world. Anyway, thanks for watching. Drop a rating and subscribe over here if you want to see more Don't Starve content in the future. Take care and stay safe.